Hey everybody, this is Wolf Dota casting AD2L Season 5. We've got Born to Feed up against High Self Esteem, and I've got a co-caster today, my buddy, my buddy Hans. How's it going? Radiant's pick. Howdy. That was awful. Anyways. Yeah, it was, but that's alright. Yeah, we're good. We're so pro. So, Born to Feed bans out the Skyrath Mage and the Viper. High Self Esteem bans out the Brew and the Terror Blade, neither of which are too surprising. Born to Feed does pick up the Ogre, which I wish them luck if they decided to go with that earlier in the match. Or in the uh, lobby, sorry guys. And then High Self Esteem comes back with a Marana and a Tide Hunter. So, getting probably a support Marana. You don't see her run core very much, and a good solid offlaner. And Born to Feed grabs their offliner, offlaner as well. What do you think? What are they going to pick? What's their prop pocket strat to win the game? Gosh, I'm no good at this. Um, I like the brew ban. Uh, a lot of team fight that goes well with the ogre. You know, chain them down together. Yeah, that's just it's a lot of fight in general. Plus, it's very hard to lane against a brew, so I don't blame them for taking it out. Um, even if you want to run it as a, I guess, off lane or mid brew. Whatever you pick has, is going to be tough to deal with, especially considering Born to Feed banned out the Viper, which is a hero that even though he'll get still get the mischance, can still do a lot of harass to the Brew. Born to Feed bans I mean, Viper is more or less made to win mid, so it yeah, sense. for sure. Um, thinking, I'm not sure what high self esteem want to go for for a carry, but Born to Feed with their Venge ban makes me think that they want to go with a um. With a uh, bat rider, maybe. Faceless. No, well, uh, faceless or a bat rider, yeah. Oh. No, they both they both of those would work. Um, I don't. I don't know many teams run faceless as a safe laner much. I mean, solo safe lane, sure. Mm -hmm. But usually he's not like a um, a farmer, <clears throat> any not much anymore. And the bat rider, they already have their off laner, so it's not sure. What they what they're banning that out for, but the other thing too is Venge is just such a solid support. Ten seconds to go. But what do you do? They take out. I like the I like the Bane ban for the <laughs> uh, for the Marana Bane combo. Yeah, Shattered even still in the pool, so they will have that if they want it. If they want to go for something along those lines. Yeah, the timing's a little bit harder, but yeah, it works just the same. Yeah. But I think. Uh, I think Shadow Demon offers a lot more after that initial nightmare than Bane does, and they, there, there it is. Not surprising, but he offers a lot more in terms of damage. The Soul Catcher bonus damage, even so, just ganking at level two, that's twenty percent increased pure damage, increased and dealt is pure. So that's can be a substantial yeah. amount. It can especially up against two tanky heroes that are on the Born to Feed side, in the Ogre and the Centaur, neither of which are. I would neither of which I would call soft at any point in the game. Absolutely. Now, would you say that they're gonna run three solo lanes and have the Murano Shadow Demon just roaming around, maybe poking their head in, in the safe lane every once in a while, but for the most part, just being a roaming gang squad? I I think so. Um, I imagine they'll probably start off mid or start off in their safe lane for probably the first two or three minutes until they've either until they've either secured a kill on the Born to Feed off lane or zoned him out. To such an extent that whatever they pick as a safe lane isn't worried anymore. Um, Born to Feed, I think, won't be too worried about that. Um, Centaur needs levels, but at the same time, he's also he is fairly good in most one-on-one -on -one matchups. Ooh, pick up a Spectre, so there's their late game right there. But well, I wonder what uh, I'm not sure what high self esteem is gonna go for. They probably maybe a phantom assassin very strong right now. They could also go with a anti mage and try and push to win. Um, I would say Spectre usually beats anti mage as dispersion and desolate are both pure damage as well. And you can you can chase anti mage through the trees and stuff with a uh, with a good dagger. To go. No, absolutely. The only problem is I find that Spectre is pretty easy to shut down early if you get aggressive on him, and the Murano Shadow Demon is pretty scary for that Spectre early No, on. for sure, for sure. That's that's a lot of pressure they can apply very early, and really hammer down. Mmm, they go with a Luna. 
can't believe I didn't think of this. The Shadow Demon Luna combo is really good, as when you disrupt Luna, the two bonus illusions will uh, their glaives will bounce as well. So right before a high ground push, yeah, you can have the extra illusions for eight seconds, at, assuming Shadow Demon's got max dis disruption. Um, but so those two illusions plus Luna who goes will go Manta guaranteed. Um, yeah. That's if they get anywhere near the enemy, the uh, born to feed high ground, it's just gonna melt. The amount of pushing power that they have is unreal, which I think is really, really good up against a Spectre. Um, that is not a hero you want to take into the ultra late game, as Spectre, if they're even remotely on your side of the map, Spectre can just go in, throw herself into the other team, die, maybe take one down two down with her kind of thing assuming her team is around the edge mm -hmm. buy back haunt in and just clean up a late a late team fight and then I, it's very difficult to deal with Ooh, witch doctor support pickup so decent at a decent um babysitting support and the dual stuns that they'll have in the ogre and the witch i think is really solid they'll They'll be able to do some stuff with that if you don't see it very often but if the if witch doctor decides to go in a maledict build which i mean i know is kind of yeah. eh because it's really hard to push and keep be just a general support but it's a very good aggressive reserve time with the extra damage because everybody on everybody on high self-esteem seems to have a way to cancel his ultimate mm-hmm no for sure um it's it's going to be a tough for Witch Doctor to get off a solid ulti. He's going to have to be able to place himself up some high ground, around a corner, or somehow get a BKB uh, or a Shadow Amulet, Shadow Blade. Cause, yeah. I mean, Tide's, Tide's the only one that you don't really want to have to use your ulti or use your stun to cancel the Witch yeah. Doctor ulti. But, I mean, the Shadow, the Disruption, Lucent Beam, the Marana Arrow if it catches her. I'd say Lucent Beam's probably their best thing. Six second cooldown, 700 range, very solid. Five seconds. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the Luna's gonna be up in the fight with her BKB on, so she can take him out almost without even thinking about it. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see the uh, initiation, counter initiation um, fight between the Centaur and the Tidehunter because their two Alties um, fight each other so. What's the word I'm looking for? They just counteract each other so well. Because, you know, if you want to disengage with a with a stampede, a good Ravage will completely shut that off. And the same with an initiation. But at the same time, it can get you away from a Ravage if he doesn't throw it out right. Yeah, if he hesitates for a for a short short period after the blink, or if he if he if Ty doesn't have a blink dagger, it'll be very easy for Centaur to de-initiate or well, just break yeah. uh, break off the engagement. With the tide hunters, you can just run away strat. Yeah, exactly. Which I mean, you never. It's tough. You don't want to ever blow um, ultis with the when running away. But at the same time. But I mean, stampede is such a good disengage skill. I mean, it's almost like it. You can use it for either and not feel too bad about it, especially when it gets to level sixteen and it's only a six. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And but. So final bands coming up from each team. Born to feed takes out the Invoker, just excellent hero in every direction. And I self seem does not have a mid player. They ban out the Silencer, who, which, <coughs> I I guess if what they're planning to go for has, um, I mean it's Silencer is so hard to initiate into as the a good one will sit in the back with a four staff, and as soon as it, he sees a Tide blink, he hits R. And they just go to town. Not to mention, even if he's across the map, he, even if he's protecting Spectre from across the map, and Spectre has to haunt into a fight, Silencer can global with in conjunction with the haunt, and can really, really mess with another team. So, a bit of a global it strat there, Bando. Uh, it's also a way to go through Witch Doctor's B, because it'll shut it off. No matter what. Whether or not he has his BKB on, yeah. Mm hmm uh, I think BKB. I think BKB is going to be a br pretty big deal for Born to Feed. Um, ooh, Puck. That's an excellent mid hero. Um, I, I think that helps them with some team fight lockdown, which is something they didn't really have before. Mm hmm. 
I'm thinking that they're going to probably probably run the uh, Windrunner in the um, in this. So oh, they might be going aggressive here with the Luna going top. But let's quickly introduce the teams. So on the why can I not select? Okay, there we go. On the Luna, we've got uh, Monster. On the Mirana, we've got uh, Hot Ars, I guess. Uh, Pandemix on the Shadow Demon. Still having a hard time selecting things. Oh, camera. Sorry, Brad. If you want to go through and quickly introduce the other, or I'll Absolutely. finish introducing. We have the uh, Tidehunter played by Hoff, and then to the, the follow it up, we have God's Hands on the Windrunner. And then on the Dire side, we have the Witch Doctor played by Hutch. Um, the Ogre played by uh, Rukin. Um, we have the Spectre by, uh, played by Snitter. And the Puck is played by Lambs. There you go. The Centaur Windrunner is 21. So Centaur's hanging out on the rune, trying to get that early rune. And then there's some aggression going into the, uh, the Dire Jungle here. They're wandering around. Maybe putting on some. Yeah, they put out an aggressive war, blocking the uh, pole camp and giving vision behind the uh, tier one tower there. And here we go. I'm not sure if that ward actually blocks the pole camp. I think it ends right as those right in the rocks just in front of it there. But it will give them vision if they are pulling. Okay. So, this a uh, solo safe line tide hunter. And then the aggro try. Yeah. And the mid. We've got the mid uh, Windrunner. Here. So Shadow Demon is moving semi aggressively. Gosh. I don't know what this problem is. For some reason, I, am, I cannot click on heroes. Or I cannot click. I have to Odd. select. I have to drag select. Action. Off. Nothing's happening yet. Um, Shadow Demon was, I th think, spotted out, but they'll know he's missing. In the bottom lane, it's just a centaur up against the tide. I think the tide should win this game. The physical damage. Just in the spam coming from Anchor Smash. Its recent nerfs, oh, we have a disruption Smash coming out onto the Witch Doctor. Oh. Arrow to follow up, and this is going to be your first blood. Oh, gets a cask off, runs away. Nope, Shadow Demon manages there, to pick it up. There it is, yeah. Sorry, Brad. Didn't mean to cut you off. And there. I mean that's what you have to be afraid of when they're running a uh, Shadow Demon Marana. It's just so easy for them to get aggressive, like in the first minute. Mhm. Mm and then, meanwhile, the Luna is somehow on top of the board. I mean, granted, the uh, B2F is playing fairly scared. That said, Stun's gonna come out onto the Luna, but with that movement speed at level one, this doesn't even matter. I mean, it looks like she's just going to go up and go tank for tank with this Ogre Magi. Which not a lot of heroes can do in the early game. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. So like you were saying, this Tidehunter does seem to be keeping ahead of the Centaur War Runner. Yeah, not... It's just really not a favorable matchup for this for the Centaur. No, it's he's gonna have a hard time. Anytime he comes up, he's gonna get his damage reduced. And we do have a pause coming out. Up. Yep. Chance to mess settings. Let me know if it starts up again. Will do. So we have um, Invis Rune from the Murano, which is really a big opening for some early aggression here. If, if she can get herself into a nice position for a. Uh, a nice easy arrow. You don't even have to use the disruption. That would be ideal. Mm -hmm. Here's some things. Anything happening? Hanging out ward spots, I think. Gotcha. Seems that they're having um, communication issues. Skype problems? So the mid matchup so far seems to be going um, in favor of Windrunner, although um, 
actually quite favorably. She's up with a number of CS and a couple denies. The game's starting up again right now. Here we go. That? On it? I was just trying to give a quick Google to see what the problem might be. Gosh. Just another disruption coming out on, on to Spectre. Lucent Beam follow up, but it was a very, very short range arrow and doesn't look like they'll be able to get the kill. Oh, might be, be might scared. be able to get a return. It's a lot of damage coming out, nothing yet. Shadow Demon's up fairly deep. Spectre's trying to hide, hide around in the trees. Lucent Beam comes out and there's another kill onto the Spectre. Ogre's still there and Witch Doctor and Shadow Demon are trading blows. Looks like the Shadow Demon's gonna win this one. Witch Doctor's trying to make his way away. They can get around the corner for another Lucent Beam. There it is. Monster with a double kill on the offlane farming Luna. Not something you want to be giving away. That's uh, two kills for them and three kills for their tri lane in general. That's a rough start for B2F. Absolutely. I mean, she has Aquila and 700 gold in the bank, more or less, so he's off to a real good start. Yeah, um, I imagine the Luna is probably going to want to go just straight into Treads. Maybe maybe Brown Boots or into a Midas, if with such a good start, if she decided to. But because she got the early Aquila, it makes you think she's not going to go for a Midas. Just can't really see it happening. Now, Basilius pick up on the Tidehunter, is that something that happens a fair bit? Because it doesn't seem uh, that normal to me. Um, I imagine it's just due to Anchor Smash's mana cost. With that extra little bit of regen, you can actually spam it forever. It actually will never end. Oh, another pause come out this time from B2F, guys. Uh, let's see what's going on. So the Tidehunter's on top of the board right now, which is um, surprising. I mean, the mid-heroes are, are not even keeping up with him, so he's really doing very well in this early game, um, which has got to be pretty scary for for the side of Born Defeat, because if that Tide gets an early Blank Dagger, I mean, any team fight that they initiate will end in tears. Yeah, no, it won't be good. Especially with that Ravage, and then right after the Ravage, you can go into an Eclipse, and oof. It's beautiful artwork going up on the map right now. Yeah. Oh, glorious. Sorry, guys, I'm not talking much. I am trying to sort out why I cannot seem to click on things. I have to click drag to select things properly. Keeps jumping back. I'm not sure if that's my setting or what's going on, but. Looks like the game's gonna be starting up right here. Yeah, damn it. I'm trying to figure that out. Another big thing to note is that this Luna is level 4, and the Spectre is just now gonna get level 3. Yeah. And, I mean. Another disruption. Arrow, like, oh. it's gonna land. And that's going to be another easy kill coming out. Shadow Demon is going to be a return kill, but they did get the Ogre. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Spectre trapped in the trees, and they seem to know. Having a hard time getting back to her dagger, and there she touched it and got a creep. Meanwhile, uh, mid God's hand on the Windrunner did rotate in. Yeah, trying to come in and power shot through the trees there, but it was a little wide. Yeah. That gave uh, the puck a little bit of time to try and catch up here some. Uh, he's slowly climbing his way back up, but I mean, right now we see Radiant's got the top three spots. Yeah, no, it's looking fairly good for them so far. Diamond. Unfortunately for them, though, they're... Sorry, for B2F, they're just they're having a tough time in all the lanes. Now, that doesn't mean that they've lost the game by any stretch of the imagination. Once they get, they're going to get a Blink Tiger up on their puck, and they're going to get one on their Centaur. And when they get that, they will be able to uh, make some sort of a comeback. Bottom, we have Tide making a play for the Centaur. He's got Ravage, so that's not to throw it. Probably a good call. But the uh, Centaur, the Centaur, oh, apologies. No, uh, top lane, we got Witch Doctor got caught out with the uh, an Arrow Disruption combination. And one thing is, I imagine we'll we'll look to see them rotate mid maybe mid here fairly soon um they seem very good at the combination always and getting the arrows to land which is impressive 
Oh, we might see another one. Disruption. Arrow comes through. And it lands again. There's the Soul Catcher. Ogre's very tanky. They need a Lucent Beam. There it is. The pickup. And Monster oh, is dominating oh, now. That. Oop. Going back going back to this Tide Centaur line, lane, um, the Tide has been so dominant that he's forced the Centaur to go into an early ring of health. And I mean, he doesn't even have boots yet, so the Blink Dagger is far and away for that Centaur. Yeah, he's gonna. He's had a really rough start up against this tide. It was a. It was a very good draft from HSC. I think, just due to the picks and and not just the drafted heroes in a sense, but also the way they decided to lane this gave them a, uh, an excellent chance at winning. And we ha still haven't seen rotations to or from any lane. Um, looks like we might have another disruption coming out under the Spectre. There it is. Arrow comes through, and it does land. They get the Soul Catcher as well. Lucent Beam, couple more right clicks, and he goes down. That is another kill for the Shadow Demon. He's 2 1 and 5. Uh, and the Luna is 4 0 oh, and 2. So the Luna is having a heyday and does have a Midas recipe I mean... on the Crow out coming her way out to her. It's looking to push that lead. I mean, you get Aquila boots and you still finish a seven minute Midas. That is not a good sign. No, it's not. Puck in the mid lane getting very low to gods. Just harassing. Shadow Demon's rotating in as well, coming in from behind. But he's not going to make it in time. He's not going to. No. Puck's going to be able to run back. But he's going to go right back to the base here, losing a whole lot of time, a whole lot of experience. Mm hmm. Um. So far, both. Both the supports on B2F are very, very poor. We look at the net worth, they're both struggling. And now, HSCs aren't doing that much better, but on a support, a little bit means a lot. And if we look at the wards, there are no wards. Another disruption coming out. This time it's onto the Shadow Demon, blocked by the Ogre. Lucent Beam's popped here. They get a kill. Are they going to be able to get two? They will clean up two. The Spectre, in the meanwhile, runs up to the top. An excellent dive coming out, knowing when that creep wave is going to show up and being able to avoid it. Vector's still not level 6, and Luna's already almost level 7, I want to say. She is level 7. She's 100 experience yeah. into level 7. Yeah. So. Scary business. Mm -hmm. So it looks like she's going to go into the helm here, so just straight farm for this Luna. She's going to take her lead, and she's going to push it as far as she can. Yeah. I th and I think that's a good thing to do against the Spectre, because if you can get ahead up against the Spectre, especially on a very strong pushing carry, I think it once you, uh, you'll you be able to take down these Tier 1s, I think they're going to start dropping fairly soon, once we see this Tide rotate out, which... Does he have his Blink Dagger yet? He doesn't. Okay. Tide does not have his Blink Dagger up and running yet, but he is getting very close. Look at the current gold. He's got a thousand to it, so he's about halfway there. Up in this top lane, Luna is just continuing to farm. Did you... Another arrow coming out, and it's going to clip the ogre, but that's pretty deep. I don't think they want to go on that, not into the witch doctor's heal. And it looks like Marana's going to rotate down. Shadow Demon is rotating in behind the puck. He's going to have to be careful. He's already used his... Sorry, he already used his... Um... Oh, arrow misses. Yeah, it was through it a little too soon. Plus, he's able to jaunt to his orb that he threw out. Yeah, the jaunt was up. And it was a good orb beorehand. I was trying to spit out the word uh, phase shift. Work. I love it. And they are going to leave this Luna up alone here, which I think is fine. She's got enough sustain to be fine in lane. She's got her treads now as well. So she's very tanky and very quick. Grass and cast coming out. Bottom, we got a Ravage blown. Hits the Ogre. Soul Catcher onto the Ogre. Centaur's ult, he's popped, and he's going to run away. Centaur's running in behind. Puck gets a Dream Coil on two. Doesn't look like they quite want to go. Coming out on the Shadow Demon... And Spectre ulti, Murano's ulti is popped to counter though. Shadow Demon's walking away, he's got and just a little bit of health. No vision. Yeah, no vision out. But the Spectre is oh, chasing the, the, the tide. It hit the tide and they're chasing, but 
Besides, that's too far to dive and doesn't want to deal with it. That Shadow Demon lived with about so 50 lot, health. A whole, lot, a whole lot put out and nothing to say, nothing to show for it. Both On both sides, ultimate's blown with no kills. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, if you, Luna, she just pushed down top, took a tier, tier 1, got the last hit on even. I, they didn't even pop a glyph for it, at least not that I heard. So, more gold coming into this Luna's She's pocket. She's going to have this Helmet Dominator as soon as she uses her Midas in 4 seconds. Uh, she could have had it before she finished her tread, she just decided not to. Um, wouldn't be some, I could see a Mask of Madness build coming out from this Luna just to really, really push the early game. And the lots of early fights. Because with a decent, decent... I don't know. Go ahead. You were talking. Um, especially with the defensive support in the... Such a good defensive support in the Shadow Demon. Long range arrow coming out onto the Witch Doctor and he's going to drop. Easy pickoffs coming out from HSC, and they're just making this draft work. I mean, as much as you say easy pickoffs, that was a very long range arrow, and it was hit very well by the Marana. Uh, this guy's obviously been watching Sing Sing. Shoot arrow, hit arrow. That's what this guy is all about. It seems to be, except for that one mid on Puck. But... That's a... Puck's not the easiest hero to, uh, to arrow, I guess. Can't blame him for that. Uh -huh. Looks so like they want to push the bot. Ward vision that they have on uh, on Radiant here. They're trying to be very aggressive on the mid now. They left the mid alone for quite a while, so. Mhm. Mm oh, and that arrow. Yeah. But again, this tower is going down. The, the Central Zelt is used. They're all. going on the Tide Hunter bottom. Defensive disruption onto him. He gets off an anchor smash. He's dropping low, but are they going to be able to finish him off? Spectre's ult, he comes out. The mid tower is taken down by Luna. Ravage is blown. Shadow Demon's going to be able to TP out, and Moonlight Shadow to get the Tide away. And Catapult finishes off the Dire Tower. So it's two towers for nil exchange. And then Luna TPs in and gets a kill with the Luc with, sorry, with the um, Lunar Eclipse. And I don't think they're going to be able to get any kills out of this. Just a massive amount of gold. Like going to try and put a bit of a push on bottom. Which, I mean... All of, all of HSE is up, so, I mean, they have to be very careful in this. They're all up, but the thing is, they just used all all of their ultis that they have available to them right now. But it doesn't look like B2F just decides to back off. Right now. And the net worth lead is already over 10,000 in favor of HSC. That's an impressive gap to have built up at the 13 minute mark. And goal, or sorry, well, experience is this, about 6,000. If you look at the last hits and denies on here, mm -hmm. if you look at the last hits and denies, this Spectre is just sad to behold. I mean, the offline Centaur who was losing heavily is ahead of the Spectre, so I, she yeah. has to abandon any, any hope of Radiance. Mm -hmm. And... The other thing that we have to talk about as well is that it is three towers to none, and each of those towers, none of them were denied, and two of them were last hit by the Luna. So that's going to be... Ooh, good, for, good power shot coming out. That's going to be at least probably 6,000 of that gold lead in just um, just towers alone. Up top, we got a Shadow Demon. Absolutely. He's going to get stunned up by the Ogre, the Centaur, and cleaned up by the Double Edge. So B2F is finding a pickoff, which, I mean, only on a support, but at the same time, it's better than nothing. They just caught him trying to probably get an aggressive ward out, and they're going to look to go on this Luna. Centaur doesn't have his Blink Dagger, but he's got Stampede. Do they want to Stampede into him? No, they decide they didn't want to. Looks like they're going to back off. The uh, Centaur runner has decided to skip his blink for now and get a hood which he just got mm -hmm. maybe he'll start saving for blink now that hood really saves him on on from the side of hse because they got a lot of magic damage coming through yeah and he might finish that into a pipe before he goes for his blink and just play a little more defensive because when you're playing defensive like this like b2f is forced to you have to you don't want to look to initiate or i mean counter initiating is great but at the same time you don't want it's hard to so hard to for, try and force aggression when you don't have these this, your tier ones up that your team can come and help you out at or just when you're just... on the ogre the ogre is gonna fall right now and this witch yeah. doctor he's running away but that Luna's close in pursuit she's got another loose another uh, lucid beam here 
Doesn't even doesn't need even it. Need it. Oh, just cleans him up with the auto attacks, and that's that. And the specters running into the trees, but oh, no arrow! The arrow! They saw her. Oh, just missed. And the one there. right click to follow her off, follow it up. What a play! Good guess coming out from Hot on the Marana there. He is playing fantastic. He absolutely. He must have realized how little time she had left pathing and was able to guess from there. And now the the arrow might not have even might not have hit, but it was still they gave him the vision to get that one lucent beam and the one right click that they needed to finish him off. And looks like they're gonna push the tier two off this. They see the ogre. Ogre's just standing still. Hopefully it's not a disconnect. Disruption into arrow and the soul catcher just blows up that ogre. Normally not a hero that you see die that quickly, but it's just not a lot they can do. And B2F is gonna call it at sixteen minutes. Good game, well played, coming up from them. Gosh. And we'll have to watch I game mean, I two. I understand it. They, uh, they lost all their lanes, and I don't think that it was really that they played them poorly. It was more that they just got outdrafted. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a tough game for them. They got outdrafted, and they got outlaned as well. Um, but... That's not to take anything away from high self-esteem. They played that fantastically. They knew exactly how much aggression they could apply without feeding away kills. Like, if you look at it, the Shadow Demon died twice. But that's a five-position Shadow Demon. Like, who cares? It doesn't even matter. And that's it, yeah. MVP definitely to Murano, though. I mean, 4-0 and 10, and more or less the reason for most of those kills. Like, she just played. The, the, like, the amount of coordination it takes to get those timings to land those arrows is unreal.